When you wake up, what's your regimen when you wake up? Jump out your bed, brush your teeth, then they wash your face up. You go to work, come back home, eat, watch a little TV until you're ready to sleep. Then we wake up, the next day when we wake up. Jump out of bed, brush your teeth, then they wash our face up. Our day begins, go to work, come back in, probably eat, go to sleep, and we do it over again. But how many of us take the time out? I mean, really take the time out. Taking time out our day just to talk to the creator and say, Thank you for waking me up just to witness another day. Thank you for the bed that I rest in in which I lay. And thank you for your protection. You kept me from harm's way. We got blessings right in front of our face. To see celebrities and feel like we don't because we not in their place. This life is hard. I know that it's tough. But if we got it hard, somebody has it harder than us. So I'll be down in the dumps. There's somebody looking for their next meal in the garbage. Down in the dumps. Some people homeless. Sleeping on concrete. They tussle. You in your soft bed with warm sheets. You cuddle. Your bed's a mattress. You ain't feeling they type of struggle, but they bad as rocks, kinda like Barney Rubble, this life is just full of trouble, we tumbling, then we fall, living our life through pain, we suffering through it all, but the man upstairs, we never think to go call, public bathroom, cause all we do is sit and stall, go thank God for where you are today, you here now, but tomorrow could be gone away, talking to God, we put that on delay, but it's the opposite, go, talk to him quick, on delay, what I'm trying to say, is did you really thank God today? He's the reason that you wide awake. Ain't no need for you to contemplate. Get on your knees and thank God and pray. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is, did you really thank God today? He's the reason that you wide awake. Ain't no need for you to contemplate. Get on your knees and thank God and pray. I know, I know, life is full of heartache, nothing but scars and pain. But I know, I know, that if you stay strong, better days are not far away. I know, I know, that if you pray to the Father, He will help you find a way. So please don't, please don't forget to thank Him for all things. What I'm trying to say is, you really thank God today. He's the reason that you wide away. No need for you to contemplate. Get on your knees and thank God and pray. Yeah. What I'm trying to say, you really thank God today. He's the reason that you wide away. No need for you to contemplate. Get on your knees and thank God. This and pray. is yeah. the Born of Levi experience on GOCC Media. Yes, 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 yes. Shalom, shalom, peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. How's everybody doing in the room this evening? Ah, Welcome back to the Born and Levi Experience here on GOCC Media. And I am your host, Deacon Hazak. And we're back with another broadcast. Y'all see the title, Can You Leave the World Behind? We're going to talk about that. Can you leave the world behind, brothers and sisters? That's what we're going to be talking about. That's the topic of discussion. And like I do every week, brothers and sisters, if I'm coming in nice and clear, please do me a favor. Drop a qualm in the chat for me, please. Please drop a qualm in the chat for me if I'm coming in nice and clear so we could proceed with tonight's broadcast. Okay, I got the real-time qualms coming in. All right, all praises be to the Most High. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, ho I hope you guys had a blessed week. And also, how can I forget? Happy Feast of Purim to all those who celebrated Purim uh, this week. I hope you guys had a blessed Purim. And, you know, <clears throat> and acknowledging how the Mosai saved our people from the hands of the Persians from. Uh, the Agagite, Haman, who tried to destroy the children of Israel. But praise the Most High for Queen Esther, who was there, uh, who was able to thwart his plan and save us out of the hands of our adversary. So we'll clap it up for the Most High for that as well. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, I hope you guys had a great perim. I hope you guys, uh, you know, was able to commune and to, uh, you know, share gifts with one another. And most importantly, it's more, it's more important to give than to receive. So, you know, 
But nonetheless, we are here for another another broadcast. I, I pray, like I said, I pray you all are, are well. I know, I know, uh, you know, we're gonna come together this weekend, and, and we're gonna do something for those who wasn't able to gather during the week. But nonetheless, we are here. My sound is coming in nice and clear. Video is coming in nice and clear. I hope, right? something real quick okay that's all i got all right one second give me some more brightness over here all right yes all right so before we continue brothers and sisters gotta do my announcements real quick um want you guys to know that this episode of the born levi experience is brought to you by the hebrew the hebrew and bible academy Mastering the wisdom of the Bible. Brothers and sisters, you don't want to miss the Hebrew and Bible Academy. If you haven't enrolled, you can still do so. There's still time on the clock for you to enroll if you want to enroll in the Hebrew and Bible Academy. Right? Um, we got some brand new lessons for you guys. Right? We have the identity of roof, uh, the identity of roof. We actually did that lesson last week. And if you missed out, man, listen, you got to go back and try to catch it. Uh, right. Really, ex uh, annihilates the thought of roof being a Gentile or from one of these, uh, nations that the most high didn't want us to deal with. Right. So the identity of roof, right. The Jewish relationship with the tribe of Judah, the 70 angels and the connection to the secrets of the times, so one of the lessons that we that, that one of the brand new lessons, right? The full breakdown of the 24 elders written in the book of Revelations, marriage roundtable discussion, right? And walking with the commandments in Christ. We can't forget the new segment with uh, Elder Shapat and Elder Rakar and also the Hebrew that is broken down eloquently by none other than elder lawyer so brothers and sisters you don't want to miss the hebrew and bible academy if you would like to still enroll historytimes.org yes go to historytimes.org and enroll and trust me if you missed any lessons they will send you the lessons that you missed so if you missed last week's lesson about the identity of roof finding out our true identity don't worry they'll send you the actual lesson, right? With the PDS, everything, right? And this week, I believe we're going into, we're going into uh, uh, the UFOs that's written of in the scriptures, right? So if you want to find out about the UFOs, what the world are calling UFOs and aliens, you're going to find out what those really are, right? There's no such thing as aliens coming from far, far, far away galaxies, You'll find out in the Hebrew and Bible Academy if you join, right? So don't forget, brothers and sisters, historytimes.org, historytimes.org. <clears throat> ah, now that's out the way, right? So now let's talk about it. Can you leave the world behind? And the reason why I titled it this way for you know for multiple reasons one reason i could give you right now is uh is a, a interview that i seen earlier this week which changed my perspective my or my perspective on date like i'm not gonna say like I, I didn't already have this perspective but it actually brought snapped it back into reality for me and i'm gonna i'm gonna play a little bit of it but, I'm gonna, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to want you guys to go check it out on your own time as well, too. So that way you guys could, you know, experience what I experienced and, and feel what I felt. Right. And another thing is, you know, understanding the uh, the times that we're living in, understanding that there's a lot of uncertainty with the wars on, in the Middle East and trying to keep track with that and Bible prophecy there's a lot of things that a lot of people would like to get done, but we got to we got to be real with ourselves. Let's say you don't get to fulfill these things. Let's say you don't get to go to the places where you wanted to travel to or get that career job that you wanted to always land. 
or finish that degree that you're studying for? What if you don't get a chance to do that? Will you be able to cope with that? Would you be able to push forward? And matter of fact, what what would your life even look like during those times? And what I'm going to do too, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something different too. I'm going to already have the link, excuse me, I'm going to already have the Zoom link out. Cause I want this to be, I want this to be a conversation. So I'm going to put out the zoom link. So that way we could, we could, we could conversate about this. Right. So like I was saying, can you leave the world behind? And I'm going to go through some scriptures to put it, you know, put it in this, in, in, in this proper perspective, as far as how we should be viewing this this life that we're living right how we should be living it how what what should be the focus how should we think right because one thing that i was um i was i was pondering on especially after i watched that 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 interview that i'm i'm gonna play a little bit later it had me thinking how evil this world is and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna explain what I mean when I say how evil the world is. Like the world, the like the way the world is being ran, the way the structure of the world is. Right, you're born into this world, like we all are. Right, <laughs> we're born into this world. We get thrown into the education system. We get thrown into school, and you have to learn what they teach you, right? Then from there, you're taught that you have to get a job. You have to get a career. You want to make sure you get that dream career. And there's nothing wrong with getting that career. You know, I would encourage everybody to try to find a career or make yourself busy, do something, right? Um, and then, you know, in order for you to get that career, you got to go into debt to get that career, <laughs> right? You got to, you got to go to college. You got to take out these loans and, and everything is geared about what? Chasing money. Because if you think about it, that's what this world, this life has become about money. And the status of it is either you have it or you don't. And the more of it that you have, the higher you are in the social, in in, in the in the social uh, sphere, right? You get you get access to, to 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 more things, or you know you have the freedom to do more. And if you don't have it, you you know you cha- you you spend your life chasing it to no avail. Some to some you know some people. So now, and 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 it had, and that interview had me thinking, like, it was this is this what this life is about? This life, this world has made it where it feeds your flesh, it feeds your flesh, and it makes you. I wouldn't say purposely because I I, I believe if 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 a lot of people had or or was given a choice or was given the proper information, a lot of people would choose rightly. A lot of people would choose, uh, would choose life. <laughs> Instead of choosing death, I'm talking, and I'm talking about in a spiritual sense because a lot of people don't even understand the spiritual sense of what I'm saying. Of course, everybody would choose life in the physical, like, but how many people would choose life in the spiritual rather than choosing death in the spiritual? What if you know? What if a lot of people understood that there is an afterlife? There is a complete different existence from the physical realm what if what if the majority of the earth understood that and the thing is a lot of people won't figure that out until they are on that other side and so this is why i i titled this can you leave the world behind because we got to think about it us as mankind, we are what give tangible things value. 
if nobody used money, money would have no value. If nobody put any emphasis on getting a new phone or getting a new car or having the latest having the latest uh, pair of sneakers or having the most expensive shirt on or jeans, if nobody really paid attention to that, it would it wouldn't it would have no value. But the way this this, this system works is like they make you want to be a part of it. If you don't, and if you don't have what they have, you're socially not in their in their group. You're lame. You're poor. You're broke. Look at me. I'm flashy. I have all this. So, like I said, if if mankind didn't give uh, these uh, these possessions any 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 uh, I would say any we didn't pay it no mind and we didn't put these possessions on a pedestal. I believe life would be way more simpler. Imagine, imagine us living off of the land <laughs> and, and me saying that it, it brings, I don't know if a lot of y'all seen that, that meme that, um, or what you call that, that guy named, uh, Orlando Brown, Orlando, Orlando, Orlando Brown. He did a um he he was getting interviewed and he was highly upset because of you know they charging us <laughs> they charging us for things that God made free water air fruits and all of these things that it, I, that just brought just brought that to my mind but a lot of these things the most high grown uh, you know allows it to grow and we are to live off of these things but of course Somebody, somebody had to, somebody, somebody had to take the time to plant it, to grow it, right? And of course, I, you, somebody should be, you know, paying for the labor. But what if you was to do the labor yourself? So, like I said, a, a lot of things that's, that's that that we have on this earth, we put the val, like the value is not like I'm gonna use. The, I mean, once again, this phone again, the value is not this phone. There's, there's really no value in it. What gives the value? Us, the consumers. And I believe if a lot of people like thought that way, people wouldn't. I don't. I don't believe people would uh, uh, thrive or strive to to acquire all of these things. If we didn't put the emphasis, if we didn't say, okay, this is something of value, this is something important, how would this sell? How how would this phone sell? If we didn't put the um, the importance or the value of on money, who would chase it? And speaking of money, money is supposed to be, and 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 that's the thing, we're supposed to be using money. As a tool, because that's what it is. It's actually a tool. It's not something that you put in a on a pedestal. It's not something that you uh, have to lose sleep over. It's a tool to help you get from one point to the next. You're supposed to use it, but use it wisely. There are some people who chase it, and then it becomes the vein of their ex- of their ex- uh, existence. Oh, that's what I was trying to do. Here it goes. Right? <clears throat> and it brings me to the parable. Well, not, not even the parable. The discussion between Christ and the rich young man. Right? As a matter of fact, let's read that real quick. Let's go there. Matthew 19. I'm going to start there first. And brothers and sisters, as you come in, please hit that like button. I know I, I I didn't I didn't put out you know uh, the thumbnail or anything that I was coming on until thirty minutes early you know I apologize about that I should should have did that yesterday give people more awareness but nonetheless you guys are here so please hit that like button and allow every, allow other people to come in so I'm in Matthew chapter nineteen <clears throat> and I'm gonna start at the sixteenth verse and I want you guys to pay attention to this right and. 
in in this scenario with Christ and the rich young man, this was his can you leave the world behind moment. This was his. We don't some of us don't look at it like that. But this was part of this was his leave the world behind moment. So Matthew 19 and 16, it reads, and behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Right. He wanted to know he wanted to have eternal life because who 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 wouldn't want to live forever? So we could see that this young man, this rich young man. He had the understanding of. Trying to live in the other life, not just this life, right? So Christ goes, go ahead and responds and says, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is the most high or God. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments, right? That sounds pretty simple, right? A lot of us is probably saying, yeah, we do that with our eyes closed. He saith unto him, which, Yeshua said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love the um love thy neighbor as thyself. Where is he where is he where is Christ quoting this from? Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments, right? The young man said, saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth. What Lack I yet So he said Y'all been doing this Come on Surely you gotta tell me Something else Like you gotta be Something else That's That I'm not doing Cause I wanna enter Into life Verse 21 It says Yeshua said unto him If thou will be perfect Now Alright you You're doing good But if you wanna be perfect Go and sell that Thou has And give it to the poor And thou shall have Treasure in heaven and come again, sorry, and come and follow me. So that was the stipulation. He wanted to, and basically what Christ was actually doing was really exposing his heart. Because this was, this is actually showing that you, your heart can't be attached to the world in this world and still have the world to come. You have to choose which one you want. And this was and this in this example right here, this is what Christ was exposing in this rich young man. All right, you want to have eternal life in the world to come, but right now you have everything. So leave all that and come and follow me. Right? <laughs> Verse 22 it says, But when the young man heard that saying, it says, he went away. Sorrowful He was sad He was heartbroken He was like dang Why For he had Great Possessions So this this So this man was well off He had great possessions So he couldn't fathom The The The, the, the thought of just Selling everything And following this man Who I don't even know for sure If I'm gonna be rich in the, in the life after. Then Yeshaya said unto. Then Yeshaya. Then said Yeshaya unto his disciples. Verily I say unto you. That a rich man. Shall hardly enter into. The kingdom of heaven. So. That moment right there. Was the moment for that rich young man. To decide. All right, can I leave the world behind. And a lot of us, and I'm using this, I'm using this, uh, this scenario for us in this day and age. And every time I talk about stuff like this, it always brings me back to the year 2020. Brothers and sisters, can y'all believe that was four years ago? That was four years ago. And in 2024 20, years ago, right? Life, life stopped for a lot of people. I could say for the world. There were some people who still was living comfortably. But there was a lot of people who was living in confusion. And based upon that confusion, a lot of people made decisions that is affecting them to this very day. 
A lot of people is 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 living from the results of the decisions that they've made four years ago. And my 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 thought is, was it because they couldn't leave the world behind? When they came, when they when they said, you know what, I'm gonna go into this war, I'm gonna get baptized, I'm gonna follow Christ. Did they not also consider losing everything? I'm just, you know, I'm just putting that thought out there. Because when 2020 came, it hit it hit all of it blindsided all of us. I remember it like it was yesterday. The very week we were all planning. And, and you see, the, and, and this is how the most high is. Look, this is a teaching moment. We were all planning, getting ready to head to the Passover. We had everything booked, right? We had our Airbnb booked. Uh, where was it? That would be that year. I think we had, did we have plane tickets? We had, I think we, I think we had flight. I think we had a whole, a whole bunch of stuff going on. And the same week we were supposed to head out, the world just stopped. And Elder Elder was on a broadcast and doing a public a service announcement and you know letting us know that the Passover was canceled. Well, the Passover the Passover was not canceled because the Passover is not a building, right? It's it's us. We we're we're celebrating the Lord's Passover. We could do you could do that individually in your home, but we didn't get to celebrate it in a large capacity like we was expecting to do it. And then from there, everything just slowed down. Everything, you know, things that we necessities that we that we that we had readily available to us at the local store or grocery store. You couldn't get it. You couldn't get your Amazon packages on time. Car manufacturers, they, yo, there was a slowdown, a shortage on cars. You couldn't for a long time. You couldn't buy cars. I mean, you could have, but. You couldn't get a brand new car if you was looking for a brand new car. Right? And then the prices of of of, of those things started skyrocketing, sky, skyrocketing after that. Right? And it's and this, the price of everything is up right now. Inflation. So now during that time in 2020, you had to make a decision at that point in time. Because in order for the world to come back to normalcy some 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 type of normalcy they was encouraging everybody to drink some juice if you know what i mean you know right and in order for the world to come back into normalcy we need enough people to drink the juice and if you don't drink the juice then i'm sorry you know we got to this may be a couple of more months first they were telling us you know it's, it's just going to be for 2 weeks that two weeks turned into like two years almost to where life changed and life will never go back to that, to, to prior to, to 2020. And life haven't been the same since. So now, let me start this real quick. So now, I'm saying it like this, okay, because so, there's a lot, I, I know for me as well, there was times growing up, right, I would say things like, Yo, I don't, I don't want the world to end right now. And, I, and some of y'all could probably attest to this too. Y'all probably did this yourselves. Right? Um, I used to say things like, like, please, God, don't let, don't, don't let the world end right now. Please. I didn't even get married yet. I didn't even have children yet. Come on, man. The world can't end right now. Yo, how many of us used to say stuff like that? We, it's like we wanted the most high to stop time so that way we could get the things done that we wanted to get done. Right? It didn't make any sense. Let me admit y'all in already. I got some people already in the call. <clears throat> I see you guys. I see you guys in, but I'm going to have you guys um, muted for now. Right? I'm going to call on you before. Um, I I bring you guys in, so just make sure you have your mics and everything ready, cause we 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 roll in tonight, right? So as you as you guys come in, I'll, I'll let you I'll I'll let you guys come in, 
and I'll call, I'll click on you guys one by one, right? So yeah, so I remember I used to say things like that, like yo, the world can't end yet. Please, God, don't let the world end yet. I didn't even get married yet. <laughs> I didn't even have no children yet. Thinking like thinking thinking like that on a carnal level. But I wasn't thinking about. I was not. No way. I was. Was I thinking about my soul at that point in time? I just. I just wanted to fulfill myself. I didn't even get my. I didn't even get a career yet, man. This world, the world can't end. You know what I'm saying? Saying stuff like that. So now, for for those of you guys who are younger, or who are probably watching this, who, who who's not married yet, who don't have children yet. Have you sat down and said to yourself, this, it might be a possibility that you may, not, you, may, you may not get married? You may not have children? Y'all have, to, y'all have to really think about that. That's part of leaving this world behind. A lot of you guys who's probably studying right now for your degree and you're in your last semester. You may not get that job. Did you, did you think about that? And the reason why I want you guys to think about that is because a lot of people become unbelievers and, 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 and claim that this is not the truth because they're not satisfied. Their, their lives, like their lives is not panning out how they thought their lives were supposed to pan out. So they become unfruitful. So I want you guys to keep that in mind too. To understand that the way that the way the world is 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 working right now, you may not be able to fulfill a lot of the desires and a lot of the dreams and aspirations that you had set out for yourself. You have to be real with yourself. There's a lot of things that I would like to do on a personal level, but there is a possibility that I may not be able to do that because of the way the world is. You have to think you you can't you can't be lost in what you're seeing. And when I'm saying what you're seeing, I'm talking about what you're seeing on media, the Super Bowl, All Star Weekend, all of these things, the Grammy, all all of these things is a facade. These things were created to keep you from 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 really searching for what what's really important, because while they're giving you entertainment. They're preparing for the one to come to fight against him. So that's why I had to ask ask myself and you guys have to ask yourself as well too. Can you leave this world behind? We just read the parable because some of us, you know, we, 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 we read the stories and a lot of us read Matthew 19 before. We, we, we read the story about the rich young man. Right? We read that story. And a lot of us probably reading it and talking about something. Yeah, you know, I could do it. I, I, could, I could leave the world behind. No, no problem. I would have gave what? I would have gave up that money and gave up everything in a heartbeat if Christ told me. But you, gotta, you guys got to understand as well, too. During that time, a lot of people didn't really believe that he was really the Messiah. So a lot of things that that the people of that time was was when they was coming up to him and asking him questions is because they still had doubt. They didn't really believe that he was the Messiah. So so when that rich young man came up to Christ and was asking him, good me, you could you could imagine he was doing it sarcastically. <laughs> good master. <laughs> what say you? What what, what do I got to do to inherit eternal life? Christ gave him the rundown. Honor thy mother and thy father. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And you know, you should come into life. And he's like, yo, I do that already. Surely there gotta be something else. Christ is looking at him like, oh yeah? All right, let me see. Let me see if you really want the answer to what I'm telling you. Sell everything that you have and come follow me. And it's and it says he left sorrowfully because he could not get rid of his position. He had so much. And now that is on your plate too. 
You may, like I said, tomorrow we could wake up and the lights could be off. Right? So, <clears throat> I'm going to bring in Gino first. Gino, you can unmute yourself. I'm going to Gino. You can unmute. All right, Shalom. What's going on, Gino? Hey, Shalom. Shalom, my brother. All right, all right, all right. Where you calling from? Can you hear me? Definitely. Oh, you got you got to mute me in the background. All right. Oh, let me let me turn you down. Background, my brother. All right, all right. I can't I can't seem to hear you on my phone, though. Can you hear me? Oh, I'm sorry, cause I'm I'm muted. I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. Let, let me fix that for you. You're gonna be able to hear me right now. Let me fix that. I forgot to unmute myself on Zoom. All right. You, what about now? Okay, I can hear you now. All right. My yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I see the struggle. Yeah. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Where you calling from, brother? I'm calling. I'm calling from the. I'm, I'm with the Cleveland body. Okay. I'll praise you on both sides. So yeah. So let, let me ask this: Can you see yourself leaving the world behind? Can I see myself leaving the world behind? And, and, and all, in, in all honesty, with everything that you got going on in your life right now. Yes, I can. You know why? Because after after joining the church, you know, for the years that I've been in the church, I've learned how to get prepared to 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 leave this behind. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And, I, and I've, I've learned how to to prepare my wife, prepare my, you know, my family, and, you know, and my friends and the people that's around me to be able to prepare and get ready to leave this behind. So yeah, it's, Gino, it's, let me I'm ask definitely... you. Not, not to cut you off. I'm sorry about that. No, you're all right, brother. Go ahead. How, give me an example of what that preparation looks like for you. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh. I'm getting deep. I'm getting deep with yeah, that. Yeah, I like, and I like that, my brother. I like that. All right. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, the first thing that I, I prepared for was, gathering food and gathering um water and, and gathering things to, to to be prepared for when 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 everything hit the fan you know when when the stuff hit the fan i'm gonna be able to to, to hold things down and be able to, to protect you know what i got mm -hmm. and what i what i've worked hard for you know so that was the first thing that i learned you know and you know all shout outs to the to the elders bishops and deacons you God. know what i'm saying that 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 helped us do these things you know so that was my first thing and uh, you know also was being being uh spiritually prepared you understand what i'm saying and you know doing things that i have to do to, uh getting closer to the most high in every way that i can and doing everything that i should be doing you know spiritually you know fasting praying doing those type of things and 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 making myself a better person you know so those are the, the you know the two main things just to, you know keep it subtle keep it subtle no 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 i like that because that's what you said is is what everybody should be doing you understand everybody should be doing that all right yeah yeah so you know um like i said you know a lot a lot of people all right so is there is there any dreams or aspirations that you would like to accomplish mm, that's a good question my brother um, the the only the only dreams and things that I would like to accomplish right now, you know, after knowing what I know, you know, we all had dreams and things that we wanted to be. You know, I wanted to be, you know, a big, a big time uh, quarterback in the NFL. You know, that was my thing because mm. I, you know, I played sports and did those things. You okay. know, we always we always had those dreams and everything. But now that I know what I know and to understand what I understand, the only dream that I got, the only dream that I even think about or I want to partake in is to to be the the the, the uh, high servant of Christ. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? I, I want to be able to serve him and be able to, to make him proud of me. That's my, you know, and to, to serve higher and to, and to serve Christ the best way that I can. That's God. now that I know, you know, what, what life is about. That's my highest thing. And that's, that's the one thing that I, I strive for. All praises, all praises. All right. I, I, I like, I like those answers. I like those answers. Praise the most high. And how, how, how old do you feel? Mommy asking. I just I just turned forty one, my brother. Okay, praise the Most High. Still a young man, still young. All right, praise Thank the Most you, High. Thank you. Uh, and I'm happy that you that you're doing your best to to keep your family in order and preparing them mentally because you know what you know what it is is the the mental preparation. Like like we could physically prepare, right? But when right. but when the situation is really at our door, what's really going to help us is the 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 mental part of it, mm. right? Training our minds to understand that. And, that, and that's why I started by saying like, that a lot of these things that we have, we put 
the emphasis of, of the importance of, of these uh, tangible things. We give it value. Right. So the less detached you are to possessions, the easier it is for you to give it up. That's what I realized. That's what I learned. You understand? That, that's uh, and, what I and I, and I, I agree with you on that too, bro, because like we had to, like me personally, I had to let certain things go in life to understand the role that I'm playing now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when the elders, when they went over the, you know, the, uh, the lesson, like maybe what it was a week ago or something, it was a lesson about us knowing our role. You know what I'm saying? When yeah. they, when the whole, like the congregation, we was going through this, like, it's about knowing our role, knowing our place, knowing mm-hmm. what we're supposed to be doing, bro. Our like purpose. that, that really just, that really touched my heart. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That was one of the most profound lessons that I've had since I've been in the church and it's been years since I've been here. You know what I'm saying? So it, it really touched me and it made me feel to the point to where like, I know that I got a purpose now and I know mm-hmm. my role now, what I got to do as a man and to, and to be able to step forward and bring that talent for the most high and, uh-huh. and his son. You know what I'm saying? So it, mm-hmm. it's, it's just special, bro. You know? Yeah, it really, it really is. It really is. Man, I appreciate you calling in, man. Thank you for, for the, for, for what you're saying, man, and, and, and your words of wisdom as well, too, man. Appreciate it. I appreciate you, too, my brother. All right, Be my good, brother. All right, all praise. I'm going to put you back in the queue. Oh, man, that was that was a great call. But, yeah, that, that lesson, that lesson itself, you know, knowing your purpose, and I, and I found it that, that those, lessons like that is very, is very, very key and very needed because especially if, if someone is new in the truth and they don't know where they fit in, understanding their identity in Christ. Who are you? Right. What have Christ called you for? Once people understand that it actually makes them a better servant and it makes them, um, make better decisions as far as how they use to work in Christ's vineyard. Right. If you just, if this just sounds good to you and you don't really want to have a function, you just want to come just to listen to the word. Not that, you know, I don't want to say not at 10 times, but, you know, majority of the times, you know, you find those kind of people um, not productive, not fruitful because they just coming to hear a word and they're not putting themselves as if with the urgency, like, okay, I got to work in this vineyard. I got to find myself in this. So knowing your purpose is, I believe, is another um, tool that we could use to leave this world behind. Right. Um. I'm gonna go to an, I'm gonna go to one more call, and then um, I'm gonna play a video. But I, I see you guys. I see the rest of you guys here in in the queue. I'm gonna bring you in. Um, I'm gonna bring in Kenneth right now. Shalom. Shalom, Mark. How you doing? What's going on, Shalom? Where you calling from? I'm calling from Los Angeles, man. I'm from uh, the LA body out here. Oh, the LA body. Yo, I, I wonder if I did I meet you when I was out there. You know what? I don't think you have, man. I had seen uh, somebody um post and I seen you was there and I was like, dang, that's crazy. Uh, oh, okay, now, we, okay. We never, we never, I don't think we never saw each other in person, but I'm, I'm in a chair, like I'm in a power wheelchair. And if you can see that image, that's how I, you know, I got dreadlocks and I'm in a chair. Oh, I'm okay, okay. I, I didn't, I, oh, you see, cause I'm, I met, I met another brother. I forgot, I forgot his name. I, I'm, I'm bad with names. I'm sorry. Uh, is a car brother as well too was also in the chair. I, I met him out there. So okay, yeah, there is another guy. I seen him. Yeah. Also. All right. Well, we'll but, talk. We'll know. talk to me, man. Talk to me. You know, most high willing. I'll see. I'll see you. I'll see, we'll, we'll see each other. Trust me. Most high gonna make no, it happen. Definitely, definitely, we gonna we will meet up. You know, God. and chop it up, man. Get acquainted. Yes, sir. Um. So yeah, I wanted to say like uh, you know, I think about this. Um, you know, the question as far as like, are you able to leave the world behind and you know with and the reason why i justify my answer as far as saying yes i would is because like it, it primarily lays on my paralysis so like mm. i don't got hands on uh i don't got dexterity so i don't got like i'm not employed to where i'm working hands-on jobs like i used to construction firefighting prep cooking whatever it may be mm-hmm. i'm not doing those things so when a little bit of time after I had the accident, you know, I got real skillful with my computer doing voice command and whatnot. And, you know, I decided to go to school. Mm. So I went, to, I went to school, you know, and I, so far, you know, all praises, you know, I got, I got three, three degrees, you know, I got two A's and a BA, 
Oh, and like right now, high. thank you, man. All praises, man. And, um, you know, uh, I'm supposed to be going to one of the universities out here, man. Um, USC, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. And University I'm, of Southern California. Yeah. Exactly for nice. you know one of the programs that and that I was a, that I was a uh, you know admitted for like all oh, crazy you know, oh, I signed up for it they put me in so you know that starts in um, fall so I think about stuff like that and I'm like man you know like do you still want to keep going to school like is it worth it bro like can you get mm. a job <laughs> and the reason I question myself with that is because when I got the bachelor's you know I worked on campus and I worked with certain uh, positions for uh, certain people on campus or whatnot. But soon as I took my little break after the summer or whatnot, it was like, dang, I'm really having a hard time getting like a, the right job. Mm. You know what I'm saying? With this, with this BA, you know, this BA and I got the AA. So it shows that I was doing my work. You know what I mean? So when they see my resume, they see the history that I put on there mm. prior to the accident, the skill sets that I acquired, right. you know what I'm saying? After the accident and, you know, and just the fact that I got these degrees. So and when they talk to me, they like, okay, yeah, we can make it happen. But okay, it's okay. always like, I'm always running into them, to them, to them brick walls. So, so can, you know, long, go ahead, go ahead. So let, let, let me ask you this, Kenneth, because uh, being that, you know, you're, you're, you're someone who's, who, who, who's on a wheelchair, right? Is this, mm-hmm. is this a permanent situation or is like a. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of people ask that, you know, um, Right now, it's we can't tell, we can't say mm-hmm. if, if it be the most highest will. Con, con. You know, I feel like honest reality, honest, honestly, like I used to be wild prior to the accident. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm talking about you know street life affiliation, you know, promiscuous, whatever. You know, just being a fool. You know what I mean? Hard headed fool. I wasn't in the truth. You know, I wasn't in the truth. I wasn't going to church. Nothing. I was just out there. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. and um. Although I still tried, you know, I did the little versatility where I was like, I'm always, you know, able to work or, you know, be domesticated or be family oriented, but I was still doing things I wasn't supposed to do. So I took, so when this happened, I was like, man, dude, I kind of said it for what it was. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, you paralyzed, bro. And I just kind of just accepted it. I had my days and my nights. I get pissed off. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the doctors did say like, yeah, they told my wife, you know, the news like, oh, it won't happen. But I just, you know, I just kind of just roll with it, man, and um, right. you know, and keep praying on it, you know. God. So, so but, let, me, let let me ask you this. So, like, how mm-hmm. how 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 can or or what are you doing to prepare as far as like, let's say we have another twenty twenty situation. Like, what are things that you keep in mind, being that you're in that position? Because there could be some, there could be other people in there in your same position too, and you may be able to drop something that. They probably not even looking at. Yeah, you're right. Now, you know, my wife, uh, and we have a daughter, she's nine. Uh all praises. We 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 kinda we we kinda be on point, man. You know, we our eyes were we always had a they say spiritual eyes, uh, the eyes are spiritually open. You see things that others cannot see or whatnot, you know, and uh we just um, you know, we we the necessities, you know, we focus on the necessities, whether it's keeping the garden intact, making sure we got a million C's in the cut, MREs, you know, making sure we got waters, got filters, making mm-hmm. sure we got everything else when we need to play football, you know what I mean? And just, you know, we, 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 we stay on top of that, you know, and that's, that's the main thing. And when it comes to our, our daughter, you know, me and her mother, we do our best to edify her with real context of the things that's going on in society. From what they right, teach right. in the schools to the kids, I make sure that my daughter know. You know, I pointed something out on TV, and I was like, "What's that?" She was like, "Oh, he looks, he looks, he looks sus." And I'm like, "Yeah, he yeah. thinks he's <laughs> so yeah, that's so, good." You know, Reason most you how know, you, you showing keep that? Them right, right. Yeah, I gotta prepare her because I don't know. I want longevity, but you know, when you're in that situation, it's kind of difficult. A lot of health complications, the small things, but you know, I want to make sure I am educating her to the best of my ability so that she understands that, Hey, you need to learn. That's the reason why I'm going to school is just to show her that, Hey, your dad didn't give up. Mm. He's making things happen. Right. Going to school, still trying to do things. And I want you to see that you capable of doing a hundred times more than that, you God. know, going to school and working and doing whatever it is you're trying to do. But I want you to know that knowledge 
you need to read these books. You need to get this, this right information, you know, the Bible, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And get that understanding so that she's not behind and so that they don't try to compromise or, you know, conflict her out here in society because society's bad out here. God, you know, definitely, definitely. Well, definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate this. And and, uh, I'm sorry. No, no, but, um, you know, because what, what you're saying is very key, especially you having a nine year old. Um, my thing is also is trying to like, like, uh, you know, being that we have young children, letting them, uh, getting, getting them to understand that. All right. One day they might not be no internet. Cause you know, a lot of the things that the, these kids are, are on are stream, they stream, they're streaming, uh, TV shows. They're streaming online with their friends. So now, yeah. How like and I don't know if your daughter is if she's into that kind of stuff or if she's like you know if she streams or watch TV or Man, chat with friends. This little girl probably in the room right now on the Oculus right now. See what I'm saying? So now on the tablet. So now but I look. So so how, how 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 are you preparing her to understand like yo tomorrow that might not even turn on? And see, I'm I'm you know me and her mom are different. I'm the one that's more stern and kind of you know, the enforcer when it comes to her utilizing all this technology, you know, I got to let her know, like, just like as much as I take her privilege, I'm trying to give her an example, like it can be going like that. You Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And it doesn't even have to be, it does not have to be based upon our choice or our decision. You know, like you said, you know, uh, the, the internet can go out, you know, and you're going to, Pray you have a satellite phone, or mm-hmm. you know, you better get in them books and get back outside and double dutch. You know, right, right. I explain, like, you know, I tell them, like, and I tell people all the time, like, you know, I'm 41, I turned 42 this year. I'm just like, you know, it's a lot of things that you know, I remember in society that we realize a lot of people don't do, and a lot of children of this generation and the parents, they all kind of you know, fall into the same pot, they don't, right. they're big technology focused. You know, mm-hmm. and that's that's where they at. And I see a lot of people panicking when they lose it. Like, oh my God, what what am I gonna do? There's no Facebook. Right. There's no YouTube. What am I gonna do? And it's like, you serious? It's bigger than that. You better go, you know, get your generator and you know, make sure your get the, your get, home yep, get the protected. household in order. Con. Yeah, and and and, and 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 try to find out what's going on. So you know, if we know, so we can know if martial law is gonna happen. Or something serious may happen where they try to, you know, just come into the city or come into your state and try to do something where they feel like they're ready to take advantage yeah. or try to call or try to bring uh, a sense of order, mm-hmm. you know? So we got to make sure we know these things so we can be prepared, you know, whatever, hide, uh, be prepared or just, uh, if you stay ready, you know, you don't have to get God. ready, you know? So definitely, yeah. definitely. but I definitely, um, let her know as much as I can, you know, so I try not to let her get too comfortable. I mean, I do let her use her things, you know, cause I'm thankful that she's able to have mm-hmm. these things that I didn't have as a kid. So, you know, I'm just, but I just don't want her to get too wrapped up in it. You know, I don't want her, you know, brain to get fried. Yeah. There's an abundance of information that people can learn off God. the internet, of course, you know, but if, you know, I rather, you know, um, Unless she's looking at something that's educational, you know, I mean, it's cool, you know, but I let her look at certain things, uh, kid things or whatnot, but Mm -hmm. she gets it. She has an understanding, you know, cause, uh, like I said, her mother and I talk to her a lot. So they always talking about a farm. They always talking about, you know, what they're going to do with the cows or these animals or that animal or whatnot. So it's a, it's a lot that my daughter, you know, I'm thankful that she, she, she gets she understands so you know all praises all, right, all praises all right bro i'm gonna put you back in the queue definitely appreciate you calling in my brother um great call that nah, not definitely a great call because he gave another perspective uh you know so praise the most high all right so i got y'all i got the rest of my brother I see some brothers in the, in the in the queue right now let me let me play a quick video real quick just to um put things in, into perspective right um This, this this one was a little bit funny. I'm, I'm gonna play this one first, just to just to lighten up the mood, right? But what this what this person is saying is, is truth to it, 
but it was also humorous as well too. But these are things that we have to consider, right? Let me let me come here. Why did it do this? One second, brothers and sisters. Uh, and once again, continue to hit that like button on your way in. Right? Where am I? All right. Things that will happen after the apocalypse. All right. Here it goes. So look, it says 50 things. 50 things after the apocalypse. It's in 10 minutes or less. Let's get to it. Without jump cuts, post-production, and memory, most no-talent introverted YouTubers like myself will be out of a job. Fortunately, <laughs> there'll be no more auto-tune to make no-talent pop stars sound good, so Drake better learn how to play the guitar. With no $800 billion a year cosmetic industry at their disposal, billions of people will instantly look older and uglier. And once again, thousands of YouTubers who've made a living dressing up as circus clowns to sell cosmetics to wannabe Instagram thoughts will have to find another side hustle. And you know what's crazy? Even though this is this is there's some humor in this, he's actually it's actually true, because if you made a, a YouTube page of just uh, you just putting on cosmetics and how to do all these, what are you gonna do when 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 the world is 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 in an apocalypse phase or state of being? Like what like what's gonna be your niche after that? The dogs lucky enough to evade starving humans will form packs and hunt said humans in the cities. This actually happened in Detroit. No lie. The Apocalypse Diet Program will be the most successful weight loss program to date, and it will cost you nothing. Anyone lucky enough to survive the initial disaster will likely get in really good physical shape because that's the only way they're going to be able to survive. You ever see those videos of people in the 1970s, like on the Soul Train TV show? Well, that was the only way you had a hope in hell of surviving New York City at the time. That's what people look like for thousands of years before the high fructose corn syrup revolution or should uh, i so you see the high the high fructose corn syrup is attributed to bad health but yeah that was just some humor right you, you know you guys try to catch that just type in 50 things that will happen after the apocalypse right that's just on the humor side but i found another guy and right, join the gang yeah, hold on not this guy i'm sorry give me one second Where is the tab? I found another guy, and the po the, the the title of the video is I'll play it right now. The title of the video is Leave is actually Leave the World Behind. And he's actually talking about the, the movie. Like a cautionary uh that 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 came out, Leave the World Behind. So let me just play this one. Alert. If you have not watched Leave the World Behind, you probably should go watch it just so you can come back and be a part of the discussion. For those of you that don't care, Leave the World Behind is basically kind of like a cautionary tale about our dependence on technology and I think how fragile, not only our, how fragile our systems are, but you know how fragile society is as mm. well. The movie's on Netflix and it's, it's basically predicated on a cyber attack on our country. And I think that, it, you know, right off the bat, that's a very real possibility for us. So the question is, is this a foreshadowing? It's not like that's ever happened before. What are the odds? Now, I'd like to start off by saying, you know, this is not a, a new idea, right? The concept of basically a fire sale has been around for a long time. And for those of you that don't know what a fire sale is, number one, the idea is take out comms, you take out the grid, you take out power, utilities, et cetera. And number two, you inundate them with a bunch of misinformation and introduce chaos. Now the- And, and, and look at this information that, that he just knows. And, and us, we, we, we have no clue what he's talking about. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> obviously this man, he's prepared for a leave the world behind type scenario, right? And by the way he looks and his get up, he's I, I feel like he's ready tomorrow to just get up and just walk somewhere and just be good. But a lot of us, we don't think like that. We don't think what if 
everything was to close tomorrow. Right. The idea behind this is it's really predicated on how divided a country is because the idea mm. is that the country will tear itself up from the inside out. So all you have to do is stand back and watch it happen. The real question that I have with this kind of scenario is number one, what happens when the laws of, of man disappear, mm. right? In our thin veneer of society, let's say we did have a collapse of some sort. We had a cyber attack on the country. The question is, how fast are the laws of nature gonna take over? And mm. you may be sitting there from the uh, comfort of your couch in Cheetos and you would say, oh, I would never do some of the things that you see people talk about, you know, if there was a collapse in society. It's real easy for you to say, but I can tell you from real world experience, when I've been to say disaster scenes before, it only takes three days before people start using their cars as battering rams at the gas pumps. Imagine. <laughs> you guys hear that? <laughs> it only takes three days for chaos to start happening. And, and, and I believe that those are the people who didn't, who didn't prepare their mind like, okay, one day all this stuff may not, may not be here. A lot of us take simple things for granted. Like just being able to walk to the store and, and buy a drink. Right? I'll just play a little if, bit more of if this. If it was an attack on the entire country, what's going to happen within, say, a period of two weeks? And basically, this brings up a bunch of scenarios that people are just really uncomfortable talking about. You know, the will you sacrifice one child to save a hundred strangers type stuff. What I can tell you from real life experience is that people handle stress differently. Mm. One thing I can tell you for sure is that people are always in some kind of stage of grief. You know, they may be lashing out at people. They may be bargaining. A lot of people are in denial. Uh, you know, just people handle stress differently and they suit themselves differently. Mm. Now, in the movie itself, I think they do a pretty good job All of right, well, portraying. Uh, so he's, he's really bringing some good some good points that we need to consider that we need to, that, that, that we need to um <clears throat> look into right i'm not going to play the whole video because it's a lot it's like 21 minutes but you know i just wanted to get i just wanted i just wanted him to say some of the stuff that we are hearing just now you know within the first three days of something happened you know first they they usually say the first two days people are usually um are just like it, it didn't really set in you're just calm. All right, it's gonna, everything's going to come back. Everything's going to be okay. But after the third day, you're like, everybody's just like looking at each other like, okay, all right. <laughs> What's for dinner? <laughs> right? I'm going to bring in the next call right now. I got, I got Chris. Chris Orr. Shalom, D. Hey, Shalom. What's going on, bro? Kayum, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you doing? Uh, pretty good, pretty good, D. Um, yeah, I know um, the question. So, um, uh, ask the question again, D, so I can make sure I can. Can can you are are you able to leave the world behind, or can you leave the world behind? Like, let's say uh, it's a, a apocalyptic event, or something like the world shuts down, or something happens. Can you, with everything that you got going on in your life, everything that you have, all your possessions, can you? walk away from it can you leave the world behind oh uh, yes sir um because um i remember being in the world and was ready to leave the world uh with with worldly situations like you know pride mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um having uh the understanding of uh of this uh the, the most high highest will by way of your shine and uh the wawaka dash um shoot i you know definitely can leave all this behind um Cause I I know it's like uh like going throughout the week um D you know what I mean you, you it's like you you deal with so much leading up to the Sabbath and that, and that's supposed to be our rest but you know it's the the world still going so uh, we're gonna have we, we we deal with stuff even uh you know what I mean um on on the Sabbath day so uh you know it, it's it's almost like um all the stuff that's going on um we definitely uh. 
definitely can uh, leave this behind because it's it's tiring. It's, it, it like the scriptures say it's uh it's gonna wear out the same. It's wearing us out. But right, we, let, we find Kanye. Ka- 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 let me ask you this. Yeah. Let me ask you this question yes, real quick. Like, let's say, as of right now, like right right now, while uh-huh. while we're talking, right, mm-hmm. all your lights in your house just turns off, and the next morning. You just it's just complete chaos, and there's a there's a crazy fire on your block. Some on it, some some. What would you what would you do at that moment? Uh, if chaos happened, uh, what would I do at that moment? This moment, um, I would I would uh, first thing I would do is reach out to leadership because I have uh, El- elder um, Hannah's number. And uh, I would reach out. Uh, I would uh, text all all my brothers that I have in my phone. No, like like and, like um, like 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 I said. Let's say nothing is yeah. working. The lights, all the lights are oh, out. Got you, got you. Now, it's between the dog, your TV, all these. What what are you what 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 are you doing? I'm oh I'm I'm suiting and booting. You I'm, sh- I'm getting ready. You suiting I'm, and booting. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm putting I'm putting everything. Uh, in my Bible, uh, you know, my Bible as my sword. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, yeah. And you said you and, said your Bible um, as a sword. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, uh, you know, hint, hint. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. It, um, the suit and boot, and and if the car work, uh, um, I'm definitely, uh, I ho- you know, hopefully it'd be, uh, we have the point where we can have a meeting. Um, you know, as as time go by. We, I know uh, things going to be in place where it'd be a meeting point, you know what I mean? Because that's why we got to get on one accord as far as everybody. You know, get on one accord with each other and, and be like these little children and um and come together. Because mm-hmm. like you said, it can happen at any moment. Any moment, So yeah. uh, we, we have to get together so it could be like, okay, well, if this happened, this happened, this happened. And stop and, and stop sugarcoating stuff. It's like it's like uh, sometimes people want to sugarcoat, like, oh, well, you know, we don't want to scare nobody. No, we, we in it right now. We have to we have to stop shooting code and say like you know what let's let's get prepared forget forget trying to uh uh uh, uh saying it's scare tactics no it's not about scare tactics it's about getting ready because at the end of the day like you said it can happen at any moment so uh all, all the time when, when people say oh well you know we don't want to scare the body no we have to get prepared because the thing is um like the guy was saying you you never know until you, when you're in it. So it's best to prepare the people mentally, mm-hmm. even if you have to uh, uh, test and, and 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 tell them things and show them things, you know. And uh, Deke, I say one thing uh, uh, about uh, a time when when uh, I, I said to the uh, Most High, please don't let the world end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, real quick. Uh, so it was two times. One was uh, 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 1999 when 2000 when they were saying like everything was going to uh, shut down. Yeah, Y two K. Exactly. So <laughs> I was like, Father, please don't you know, but then I went to sleep. I didn't even look. I I didn't even stay up for the watch the bell. I just I just before I knew who uh who who I uh, was too. Mm, I didn't stay up yeah. to watch the, the, the bell drop or nothing. Mm. Um the, the second one was when the earthquake I know you remember because it went all the way up to New York. I, I yeah, was in yeah. DC. I remember yes. and, and that was uh the second time I was and, and then not knowing the scripture, guess what I said, Deke? I said, I said, I said, Father, you know my heart. <laughs> <laughs> so and then and then you and then you get to the truth and then, and then you realize and say, Yeah, the heart is very deceitful. I was like, Oh Lord, I oh, said that, Father. <laughs> well, you see, but well, yeah, you see, but that 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 was just the flesh talking. That was the flesh talking. God, yeah, man. God. All right, and now I know better, Deke. So that's the thing we have to like. We have to get prepared and, and and get on one accord. I love what um Cincinnati did and Detroit did. They had the, the Kings meeting. We have to get together and come together and, and stop all the, the nonsense. Every every Sabbath, they, even though them kids may have a spat or something going on the last week, the the the, the next Sabbath they out playing with each other. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and and if we not like these little children, we're not gonna be able to make it. Con, con, con. Well, definitely, definitely a great call. All praises, brother. I'm going to put you back in the queue. Yes, sir. All right, all right, my brother. Kayum. Right? But yeah, man. This did, like, you know, this, 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 this could really happen. These are real life situations. Right? Just, could just imagine you just somewhere or you home and every, something just hits the fan. Like, 
what what what's your immediate thought? Where are you gonna go? What what you gonna do? What you gonna take? Right? What you're willing to leave behind? Are you gonna be sorrowful because you didn't get to complete these dreams and these tasks? Right? So, matter of fact, before, before I play, because I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play one last video. But I'm gonna let me go back. Let me go back here. So I got. I got Adam. I got my Adam. Oh, you, you gotta um unmute yourself or add your mic. I'll come back to you. Add your mic because you don't have a mic set up here. I got I got Taz a lot. My Ak Taz a lot. Shalom, Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. What's going on, brother? Blessed, man. Thankful, thankful to be you know watching your lesson this evening. All praises, all praises. So yeah, so can you believe the world behind? Yes, yes. How I can, I, I can, and I have. Uh, well, I you know I just re- I just remember a little bit before being baptized mm-hmm. that I remember tell, you know telling myself that I'm just I'm tired of this. You know what I mean? You said you like, you tired of this? Like tired of what? What you mean? Just um tired of the world. Okay. You know, like in what um, sense? Like in what sense? You know, like um, you know, just when I was young, when I was a teenager, um, you know, I could just remember going through a a, a lot of tough times and not having anything. And, you know, looking at all the people at school that had certain things materialistic mm-hmm. wise and people that had blessings and me wanting it. And you see? And this is exactly what I was talking about in the beginning, how 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 the evil part of the world, it it makes you it makes everybody who's young and impressionable or just just you people in general crave uh, material things. Mm -hmm. And because because you don't have certain material things, you feel less than or you feel like, what's the point? You you know, what I mean, it it, it, kind of makes you feel uh uh, ashamed because you're not where these people are, but go right. ahead. exactly, exactly. It, you know, and it did make me feel ashamed. Mm. Um, you know, it did make me put my head down a, a little bit, mm. but you know, I didn't realize, you know, like how good that I was and, and, and how much the most high, you know, uh, blessed me with the things that I didn't have, but with the things that I did have, mm. you know, loving mom, loving dad um a, you know a house to live in i didn't you know I, I didn't respect the small things i didn't appreciate the small things so i know sometimes you know we see some of those movies right where um you, you know there's a, a a child you know he's com- he's coming up in the household and then all of a sudden he starts getting this fast money and the parents are like you know where did you get this from wait hey, um, hey, wait tell t- 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 a lot hold on real quick uh all right, so <clears throat> I see, I see, I see a person in in the chat, John Spark. The Zoom link is 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 in is in the um in the chat. Call in and and and, and give your point. Call in, but go ahead, Tazalak. Okay, it's, it's all you all good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so like uh, um, I, um, the point that I was making, I got you know I got three quick scriptures too, if it's cool to go over it. But um, the point that I was trying to make was is that sometimes we see those movies where um, there's a child, you know, all out of nowhere, you know, he starts getting a whole bunch of different, you know, getting money, getting cars, getting different things, and then the parents is like, you know, where where'd you get this from? I know you didn't get this working because, and and then you know, next thing you know, they're telling them to go. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty much my story. Yeah, I mean, you know I mean, I mean, but I mean, from that that was from when you was younger. As far as you know, you deciding, uh, all right, you know, I can yeah, I, I, yeah, I can yeah, leave that, the world behind. But you were saying that because of a, of a materialistic uh, point of view, because it's uh, easy, well, it's easy. No, wait, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because it's easy to say, oh, you know, it's, it's easy to say, ah, right, you know what, I can leave this world behind because you don't have anything. But look, but as your life is right now, right? Looking at your life right now, 
can you leave that this life behind and push forward with whatever you have obtained, whatever you got going on right now? Uh, <clears throat> it, 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 would, it would be tough. Mm -hmm. it, it would, it, you know, it would be tough, but like, I also understand that <clears throat> not only is it going to be tough, but this is where God wants me, wants me to be at this point. Mm -hmm. So I would have to um, develop a prayer life and, um, you know, a, a life of fasting of where I'm at right now mm -hmm. and, 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 and hope that the most high gives me answers to everything that's going on in my, in my, in my life right now. Right. Right. But, but honestly, it will be quite tough, but I know that I don't need the things that, I'm seeing everybody else is getting in the world. Con, con. All right, all right. Yeah. Definitely, definitely appreciate you calling in. Because, because mm -hmm. I, I got, I'm a, I got more people in the queue, and and I also yeah. want to play a, another video. Uh, right. So gotcha. definitely, thanks, yeah. thanks for having me. I, all praises, all praises, Zach. I'm gonna put him in the queue. So, like I said, um, you know, the the Zoom link is there. So if, if you want to call in and you want to bring your point out, because he said, I guess he's saying, I, I'll just read it one day. He says, my point is things ain't all that bad. Okay. No one is saying things is, is extremely bad, but the thought of understanding that things could be bad, right? That's the point where we have to actually think, because like, like, like I said, four years ago, we was all thinking the same thing. Nah, things ain't that bad. Nah, it's, Everything is going to be the same tomorrow. And then what happened? Every, the whole world is grounded. It's on punishment. Right? And that's just on the physical sense. And hopefully if you... St right? All right. He says, life's, life's a laugh and death's a joke. All right. So now, now this is perfect. And I'm gonna play now. I'm gonna, now, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna play the video that really brought this into perspective. And you know, you'll be the judge. And that's the thing with with a lot of people that's in the world. They think that this life is just all it is. But when you when when, when you're no longer in this realm, then you're gonna have to answer to the one who created this one. Right. And this and I was just pointing out just the um, the physical aspect of leaving this world behind. I was pointing out the physical aspect of leaving the world behind. Now I want to talk about the spiritual aspect of leaving the world behind. Because, yeah, it, it could be easy for, for us who are in the truth and who understand who Christ is and understand what our purpose is in Christ. It's, it could, it's easy for us to be like, you know what? Yeah, I can leave this world behind because we're, we go through the scriptures and we understand. But now what if, what if the question now is on the spiritual aspect of it? Are you ready to leave this world behind and face the next life? I'm going to play this. I'm going to play this interview. I'm going to come, I'm going to come back to the calls. I'll come back to the calls in a little bit. Right, I'll come back to the calls in a little bit. How do I get this out of here? All right, I'll keep this right here. I'm gonna go to this video, and shout out, shout out to my aunt, um, my aunt Yasar. He sent me this video early this week, and and I watched it. And I was like, yo, this just, this just brought me back, you know, or, or, or it, it put that fire back in me, like, you know, to try to live a certain way or, and to try to keep this in the forefront of my mind. A lot of things that, 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 that we go through in life and we experience, we take for granted. We take for granted um, being, just being able to talk to someone. We take for granted being able to get up out of a bed and walk and to just open up the fridge and get, get a cold drink. We take for granted 
right? Every day, not speaking to the Most High or not uh, keeping him in the center of our lives. We take that for granted. And this world has been set up for us to chase the world and not chase after the Father. And now a lot of us is left with the dilemma, all right, do I take care of my family or do I follow the Most High? Do I say to myself, all right, it's not that bad. I could, I could continue doing this for now. But what if you're not allowed to do that same thing that you're doing right now tomorrow? What if that's taken away from you? What then? You didn't plan for that. And that's another thing too. No one plans to die. Right? It happens. And now, when that actually happens, now you're faced with the reality of what's going to happen to you for eternity. And if you don't believe that, I mean, you'll find out when you get there. So I'm going to play this account. I'm not going to play too much of it. It's like, it's like an hour. But he said some key stuff in this that I liked. But... And, and this testimony, it, it, it was really good, right? And he said a lot in this testimony that it, 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 it mirrored what we read or what, what you would read in the book of Enoch concerning um, Hades, concerning what's, what's, in, what's called in, in Abraham's bosom, right? And this account... It, it, it was different, but let, let's play it. So pay attention to this. You know, Chicago was a hard place to grow up. Um, unfortunately, I took that route. Um, years have passed, and I pretty much mastered the craft, so to speak, of the streets. Give my life to, I consider them like a family to me. And come to find out, they stabbed me in the back and set me up to get me killed. Hey, wait a minute, something is not right. And I had a weird feeling in my gut about this guy. All of a sudden, I, I looked up and the guy looked at me with a smirk. He just kind of like uh, evil grin, like, I got you. It was just like, a, mm, it was so evil. But I just remember everything moving in slow motion and I fell back. This kind of darkness is not a darkness that's here on earth. Um, this darkness is alive. So as I'm falling, I knew this was hell. And then I heard the screams of the people. And the first thing I noticed were these demons, things. They're the most grotesque, smelliest. Hard. Hollywood can't even get close to how these things look. Um, they're so deformed. They have uh, a reptilian look, reptile look to them. So let me try to get closer to the way he starts talking. Um, but there was something always in my mind here and there. You know, like the Holy Spirit just kind of whispered things in my ear, certain places, certain things that would tell me I shouldn't be at places, but, you know, we don't listen as humans. You know, we just want to uh, please our flesh first, and that's what ended up happening. I uh, dedicated more of my life to the streets, more into uh, just getting money and just being selfish. And um, years have passed, and I put a lot of trust into my family, which uh, my former gang, I don't want to name the actual organization, but the street organization that I did give my life to, I consider them like a family to me and come to find out they stabbed me in the back and set me up to get me killed. Um, I want to get know, to the meat of it. And uh, it, it, was, it was pretty hurtful. It's still, you know, to this day, you know, uh, I'm getting my trust back thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. Love, uh, you know, fellowship, patience, everything, the further I was falling down, you can blindfold yourself, put yourself under the ground, blindfold yourself again, and it still doesn't compare to this type of darkness. It's mm. a spiritual component to the darkness that I was in. But the weirdest part was when I fell backwards, I started instantly falling forward. I was falling down face forward as I fell backwards. That was the weirdest part. That's the spiritual aspect of it. But as I'm falling, mm -hmm. just, I don't even know how to measure it. You know, They say the speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. It was faster than that. It was uh, I'm just going, but the further I'm going down, just falling and falling, falling, the more and more I felt like I was getting stripped of everything. I knew I was getting stripped of the things that God gave me that I took for granted, like hope, mm. love, uh, you know, fellowship, patience, everything. The further I was falling down fast, everything was getting stripped from me, and I was getting more and more afraid. But this is a difference. And, and, and you see that he was experiencing what, uh, you know what it actually tells you in in Ezra's as well too, in the seventy lost books of of, of Second Ezra, where it tells you that in seven ways, uh, 
the, the seven ways that the righteous go through when they when they leave this when they when they when their spirit leave their body, and there's seven ways that the unrighteous also uh, experience when they leave the body. And he's saying that, you know, but not in that sense. But he's experiencing what he, what his what his spirit was was realizing what he took for granted while being on earth. But type of fear. It's not a fear like here on earth. It's a different fear that that. Uh, you have to experience, like the Lord says, you know, there's a difference between reading and talking, but experience, but uh, there's no other way. I'm gonna try to get close as I can to explain this. Cause there's a lot of things spiritually that can't be put on this, in words here on this earth in this dimension, so to speak. Mm. But as I'm falling and I'm falling, I'm feeling more and more frightening. I started hearing the first thing I noticed was laughter around me. As I'm falling, it was like the, this laughter and it was like these giggling little like, like a, like a, but the laugh itself, they were laughing. I felt it. It was a different type of laugh. It was a demonic hatred. Like I just knew whatever was laughing at me hated me, hated me more than like with anything you can even describe. But as I'm falling, I hear this laughter. The second thing that caught my attention was this horrible smell. See, people don't realize when, when you leave the physical body, you still have your five senses. You still, you still have them. But the thing is, they're upgraded and modified. Mm. They're very more modified. I mean, times a million. Your sight, your hearing, your vision, your touch, everything, is, you still have those things. So this is not a fairy tale where people, you know, uh, been taught that when you die, you just pass away, everything's completely different. Yeah, it is different, but your senses are highly modified. But I smelled the smell, and, and the smell, uh, I can even just talking about it right now, so I'm sorry if I pause a little bit, because this, uh, a lot of this comes back to me, and I still get a little emotional, but um, the smell alone is so bad, like, I can't even describe it. There's nothing you can you can have a, a, a thousand corpses and, and, and dead animals and whatever you want to put into the mush. It smells like Febreze compared to what I smell mm. Um, mm. in hell. The way it smells. So as I'm falling, I'm falling, then I notice a little light, and it was so small, it was a pinpoint of light, and I heard. And as I'm falling, it's getting bigger and bigger, and then that's when it hit me. I knew. And I thought it was a fairy tale. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I just thought hell was a, a fairy tale. I thought it was a place of fantasy. I thought it was a scare tactic used by religions. Um, I knew. I said, I'm going to hell. You see that? And this, and this, this, is the, this is the experience that he had, right? Leaving the body. So basically, he was, in a, he was a part of a gang. They had set him up. And I, I believe he must have got shot or something. And for a second or for however long... He passed away and what he experienced, he's explaining the experience that he had when his spirit was not in his body. Right. And he said in his spirit, he knew that he was going to hell, even though he felt that in, in, when he was alive, that it was a fairy tale. He thought death was a joke, but he found out the real. See, time doesn't exist over in eternity the way it exists here. So all the time that I'm falling, people say, how would you have time? Time doesn't exist the way you, you can't even fathom it. Eternity start, it has no time. So as I'm falling, I knew this was hell. Mm. And then I heard the screams Sorry. of the people. Uh, yeah. The screams and the yells of the while as I'm falling in this portal, may I call it the portal, was getting bigger. You can just hear And I knew... It had to be billions, mm. hundreds of millions of billions of people down there. I mean, screaming, and then their screams are gut-wrenching. The same way I heard those demonic laughs, I can feel it in my gut and feel it in my soul. Those screams were worse because mm. of the suffering. It was blasphemous things being yelled. Uh, it, it was just, just horrible, you know, people begging for one more chance. I mean, the thing is, when you're in the spirit, you can, you can hear a thousand noises at one time, but you can decipher and know each one whether they plan simultaneously or not, you can distinctively know and hear everything. You know, like I say, it's hard to explain, but that's the closest I can get to it. But as I fall and I see this portal, it looks like old um, cave, like I'm, I'm entering an old cave system. Okay, and, uh, and, and then that's when I felt the heat. See, uh, now I'm looking back on it. It probably only really was hot when I got closer to it, but I was so shocked and so terrified by everything else, I didn't pay attention to the heat until I actually got into the first portion of the portal. And then that's when the heat hit me on top of everything. It was just a bombarded of everything. Mm. And, you know, here on Earth, in our physical bodies, 
um, we feel things separately, meaning like, you know, our nervous system. So if you get poked in your back, you get punched or something like that, you can, you can feel it just kind of in that spot. But no, there you feel it all simultaneously at one time. Mm. Pain, everything. It, it gripped it's your whole body because you, now I'm learning I was in my spirit body. I'm so used to being in my, I was so used to being in my physical body, it didn't make any sense to me. But when I felt this heat, it's a different fabric. It's a different, it's a different fabric of heat. It's not like how you burn your finger here. It's a spiritual component to it because it's, uh, it is very, it's a different type of hot. I don't even, you know, uh, I'm trying my best to describe the heat, but the heat is so, it is beyond, it's beyond. I mean, just say if I wanted to put it on a temperature scale, I would say 12,000 degrees and up. And nothing, nothing physical here, especially in the flesh, could withstand that. So, but as I'm falling and I enter this portal and I feel the heat, I'm hearing the yells. It's like just so overwhelming. And at this time, by the time I got to the bottom, I just knew I was in hell and I knew I was going to hell. But once I passed the portal, all I remember is when I hit, I hit the bottom. I didn't feel anything when I first hit. So I don't, I, I'm, I'm trying to think, you know, I was asking, was it the Lord that softened the blow when I first hit, but when I fell and I, and I raised my eyes, it felt like I haven't, uh, I had no strength. I felt like I hadn't eaten for like months. Um, mm. I couldn't breathe. It was just, it was horrible. Just a feeling of just nothing. And then, but the only thing that kept coming to my mind was, and I, I know the Lord did this purposely, was thinking that everything that I took for granted, movement, a drink of water, you know, mm, y'all heard that he started thinking about everything that he took for granted. Movement, water. Just to have the ability to move my arms just, just freely, the, the, the ability to breathe, all the things that we take for granted. It was going through my mind. I knew it came from God. Mm. I knew and you see, he had to eventually acknowledge that he didn't. Have, we don't have power. We don't have no power to do anything. It's the most high. The most high gives us all, give every, even a scoffer who's, 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 who have the ability to type right now their disbeliefs. The most high is allowing you to do that. And that's what we don't, we don't think about. We don't think that is the, is the most high that, 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 that's, that's allowing us to do the things that we're doing. To move, to think, to see. Mm. I just like you know and I knew I took it for granted and there first thing is I look uh, over see it was dark but I, I, I'm trying to you know wonder if the Lord was making me be able to see but the flames itself were emitting so high from these pews like these vents from the from the rocks and that's another thing too I want to add I don't want to move too fast but one thing I do want to add for somehow for some reason I knew I, I was still here on earth Mm. I still knew I wasn't in outer space somewhere. I wasn't. You heard that? He said he still knew that he was on earth. He wasn't in outer space somewhere. It, you see that? It's just like how the book of Enoch teaches it. That it's in, it's inside of the earth where hell is. There's a place of rest and there's a place of torments. So he actually ended up in the place of torments, which is in the earth. And it's not a physical place. It's in a different dimension, a different realm, spiritual realm that the human eye can't see. Under space, I was in a different dimension, but I was still on earth. I, I knew that. I knew it's here on earth. So the Lord is right. Hell is a place on earth. The scriptures are right. It is here on earth. It's just a different dimension. Um, so as I'm looking around and, and I, I'm just already, but I see when the, when the flames, they come up. And then you can see the illumination from the flames. You can see. And the first thing I noticed were these demons, things. They're the most grotesque, smelliest, hard. Hollywood can't even get close mm. to how these things look. Um, they're so deformed. Uh, they had legs and twisted arms, but they had a reptilian look, a reptile look to them. Mm. And their eyes were glowing yellow. Some of them eyes were red. Some of them were like 13 feet tall. Some of them were this big. Mm, they're JC. everywhere and it's just bugs there's spiders it, there's souls of the giants he said some of them were like 13 feet tall huh when the most high when the most high cast out uh uh what 90 percent of the uh, of the demons that were on earth and only left 10 there where you think they at they're they're there 
just everything. But what really caught my attention was these pits everywhere. And, the, and this one demon glanced at me and he started laughing. But down in the pits were just people. And you see, and it also he's also confirming <clears throat> what we read about in Enoch, how there's different pits or different holes or different holding cells for people. And he's saying, and them things was like billions of people. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, just people. But then I thought it was just one pit. As you really look around and the, the flames illuminate all of the space around, there's, I would say, hundreds of thousands of pits. Mm. And then with, within each pit, of thousands of people. Okay. And then around the pits, you have nothing but these grotesque demon reptil reptilian or reptile-like things making sure they don't crawl out. Uh, it was horrible. You have people who look like bone. I would say they look like bones. Some of them were bones with actually flesh hanging off, which is incomprehensible to some people to even imagine how, you know, uh, but the things that I saw and the tortures that I saw is that you, you regenerate. So just say if your arm falls off, it'll grow right back so you can get tortured again. It's a place of pure torture, like torture. Hell is no, it's no relief. There's nothing. But mm. as I'm looking at this one demon, he was about eight feet tall. He looked at me and laughed. And then all I remember was these thousands of maggots, worms, and they're like thick. They're, they're thick. They look, they're thick as soda cans. Okay, they're not like regular maggots here in this dimension. They are thick and they're big. And they, and they, they, start, they started to chew at my feet. And then once it's, well, once it was a few of them, when I looked down, it was hundreds of them. It starts to make a mound around me, up to my knees of these maggot, demonic maggots. I don't even know what to really how to explain mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. But that was the least of my worries because I felt getting a, a hand picked me up from the back of my head, and it flung me. And it flew. Now as I flew, okay. Now remember, you have no energy. You have no. There's no. Nothing. Even just when I laid down, I couldn't get back up. But now I'm realizing, you know, uh, in, in hindsight, that the Lord was with me because um, a lot of these these demons, they wanted to attack me. They wanted to rip me apart. And I can just feel the hatred. The hatred that they have for mankind. Mm. The hatred that they have for us. It is beyond anything. It is beyond, and you can feel it's ancient, and you can feel it is powerful. It is power in their hate. It is so powerful. Um, yeah. Right. So here's here's this situation with that with, with with this brother who the Most High allowed him to experience that because of the life that he was living. He didn't think he didn't think that he would ever end up there. He didn't even think it was real. And it's it's a it's a long interview. I'm going to put it, I'm going to post the link in the chat for those of you who didn't see it. I, I suggest you all watch it. It's very good. Um, he, 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 he said two things in this interview that stuck out to me. One thing that he said in this interview was, um, a lot of us, we're a lot, a lot of us, we we're operating. We walk around every day, not realizing that, Five, like you're five seconds away from eternity in a blink of an eye something could happen and you'll be where you're gonna be for the rest of your life and we don't even we take that for granted and he was also saying in this interview that how he regretted not making the most high the center of his life living how he wanted to live doing the things that he wanted to do indulging in this world and we gotta and, and and i believe that the most high allow certain individuals to experience this as a as a as a testament to us you know what i'm saying a record for us so us so we could get ourselves in order and then no doubt in my mind i do i believe that this this account was not true right and he also the one thing or another thing that he also said in this in this interview is that even fellowship is a privilege from the most high fellowship. Can y'all imagine just being able to talk to someone just to say, hi, how you doing? That's a privilege from the most high because he was saying he, like, if, as you continue to watch the interview, he says that 
even though you're all, you, you're around other people that's down there, no one could communicate to each other. You can't even other you can't even utter a word. You're just experiencing this and just torture, and then you can't even communicate to a person. And he was like, he understood that communication, fellowship, was a privilege from the Most High. A lot these things are privileges. And people scoff, people, people, people question the most high when he's the one, he's the one who gave us life. He gave it and he could take it away because you ask a non-believer, can you make your own hair gray? Can you make your own hair without, without using products? Can you tell your hair and your head on your head? Hey, turn gray. Can you tell your body to age and not to age and to stop aging? You don't, as man, as, as, as in a physical, we don't even have control of our, of, of our own being. That goes to show you that there's something greater that's operating outside of mankind, outside of this existence, that's in control of your very being, whether you believe or you don't believe. But at the end, you will find out. You will find out. I'm going to go back to the calls. But I'm going to read this before I go back to the calls. I'm in a, I'm in a book of <clears throat> James. Once again, brother, this is a continue. Hit that like button on your way in. So I'm in the book of James, like I said. Let me go there. I'm in James chapter four. So now I want you guys to pay attention to this. James four and 13. And it's like what is like what he was saying. A lot of the things that that. That goes on on our day to day lives are privileges, man. And the most high allows these things and we got to acknowledge the most high for this. We got to acknowledge him for that. We can't take these things for granted. Every opportunity that he's allowing you to be alive right now, we can't take it for granted. And 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 no, he's not just letting you be alive so you, so you could just have fun and experience this world. It's not just life is not just about fun. No one said you can't have fun. You can have fun. But are you are you in line with how he wants you to live? This this life tells you 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 this life tells you that there's rules. There's laws to follow. As mankind, we have to follow rules. And if you break those rules, there's penalties to those rules. Either you pay a summons, you do jail time, you got to pay a fine, you got to do community service. There's always a judgment for breaking a law. So that concept came from somewhere. Mankind didn't just wake up one day like, all right, let's just create rules. Let's just create laws. That concept came from God himself. So if the world that we're living in has rules and regulations that we must follow, doesn't God have rules and regulations that we should follow? And if we go against his rules and regulations, just like as if we go go against the rules and regulations in this world, there's a judgment behind it. Same thing with the most high. But let me read this. James chapter 4 and 13. Go to now, ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will go, sorry, we will go to such, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain, right? Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. None of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know. You don't even know if you're going to make it to see tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor. That appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that, so understanding that our lives are just like a vapor, 
meaning it's here for a time, and that's that, that's what a vapor is. You see, a, oh, you ever see a vapor, or a puff of smoke? See it for a little bit, then it disappears. That's this is how the most high compares our lives. Here, you're here for a short moment, and then you're gone. In the physical, you're gone. So he says, for that reason, for that, ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. Some of us, we rejoice in our boastings. Oh, I can't. When I get paid, I'm doing this. Oh, I'm going on vacation. I'm going away this year. I'm going here. I'm doing this. I Who's to say you're going to make it to see there? Only the Most High know if you're going to make it to see there. And the Most High laughs at our plans all the time. We, You could plan and the Most High, the Most High laughs. He says, but now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to it, to him, it is sin, right? So everybody is born with a conscience. Everybody is born to understand good from evil, right from wrong. And if you go against your own conscience, that will be your judge at the end. You will know what you was able to, what you took advantage of and what you wish you had more time to be like, you know what? I wish when I was on this earth, I didn't, do certain things. I didn't go after this. I didn't be with this person. I didn't, you understand? So we got to even look at, can you leave the world behind even in a spiritual sense? Are you able to leave the world behind to make sure that your afterlife will be better than your, your current life? Or will, or, or will you neglect all of the signs and continue to live how you want to live and say, ah, I'll figure it out when I get there. Because according to that brother's account, you don't, you don't want to figure it out when you get there. You don't even want to be in that predicament. I wouldn't want anybody to be in that predicament. One second. Let me fix this real quick. Right? Matter of fact, I'm going to just read one more. Let me read one more for you guys. And then it's Godspeed. Then I go back to the calls. I'm, I, I do apologize. I, know I got you guys on the call. <clears throat> Let me just bring up this last scripture. I'm in the book of Luke. The book of Luke. And let's go to verse 12. Oh, sorry, chapter 12. Why is it looking like this? All right. All right. And verse. All right here. So. Let me make this look better. The presentation of it. All right. So. I'm in Luke 12. Can you guys see that? All right. Luke 12 and 15, right? Why is it not? All right. So it says here. He said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness or covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things of which he possesseth. So there, that right there is showing us that. Your material gain does not make you who you are. Because you can lose it all tomorrow. Who are you then? And he spake a parable unto them saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought, for, brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. So there's this man who had so much wealth He had so much things he, didn't, he had no space to put everything Verse 18 it says And he said This will I do 
I will put down, I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid, laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy, thou, thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast made, that which thou hast provided? So it is, so is he, sorry, that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. See, brothers and sisters, we got to put this in, into its proper perspective. Those who are chasing the bag and looking to be rich and you're not rich towards God. You don't want to hear those 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 words. Depart from me, you work of you workers of iniquity, for I never knew you. And this is why I ask, can you see yourself leaving the world behind? Because like I said, this world is geared and it's set up for us to chase the bag. It's set up for us to chase it. But what good is it? What good is chasing it? If at the end you lose your own soul. You don't, you don't, you don't have, you don't have the power to decide or 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 to to choose uh where you, where, where you're gonna be when your soul leaves your body. The only thing you can do is prepare for that. Live right, follow the commands. And pray that you're found worthy, right? I'm going to go to the calls now real quick. I got Adam now. You can unmute Adam. Shalom. Shalom, D. Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. What's going on, brother? All right. Praise the most. High. The water for the lesson. Shalom to the family on the line and, and the, on YouTube and so forth. Um, man, so much just came. <laughs> Like a whirlwind with that video you just played, mm. <clears throat> and it really is deep because a lot of people really don't see it that way or, or truly process the way everything really is. Because, mm. like you mentioned, and so forth, everybody's just so caught up in, in everyday life. Or, as as what I acknowledge, being on the trains and whatnot, is, is people stuck on their phones and and it's, it's fantasy world, as I always call it. Yeah. And we get so focused on what we're going to do to please our flesh and to please ourselves after the work week. If we're going to go out drinking, clubbing, if we're going to try to deal with, with, with women, if we're going to try to, like you said, go on trips or whatever the case may be, we're so lost as, as, a, as human beings that we're looking for that escape and don't really understand that there is no escape. Like you also mentioned that these things were brought out for us to keep seeking and to keep trying to, to find happiness, but end up broken at the end of the day yep. after that, that few minutes or, or that pleasure or whatever the case may be comes to pass. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and even down to the, the question and so forth, as, as, as I've mentioned to you and others, concerning my life of trying to be a model fitness model trying to be a dancer for females and yeah. and uh, just trying to find my way as a broken individual with no father figure with no culture or anything of that nature to process what my purpose was to begin with that all of these stories are real for any brother and sister that, that still dabbling in the world or trying to make it and um in the fast life or trying to get signed to a deal or whatever the case may be concerning these things where these agencies, a lot of the photographers, um, designers, they all wanted to sleep with me and they were sick. And I could tell it's a spirit to how the spirit on them will try to draw you in to the point where you start going to parties or doing other things to where you end up falling into that too. And I praise the most high constantly 
for not getting me to that point of signing a deal or being in a room with, with some type of weirdos to that degree and so forth because this stuff is real. And a lot of people don't like to believe that as well because we've been idolizing these individuals so much, even down to the Super Bowl situation, to where we get so caught up on these things. Mm-hmm. But besides that, and, and my fault to be long-winded. No, no, um, go ahead, because some, somebody probably needs to hear that. Indeed, Khan. Um, I wanted to mention also, as as what my ministry is, is based off of, and even prior to, um, seeking Christ and, and finding him, praise him Osa for that. Um, like even when I was bouncing and so forth, I used to bring clothes and, and things of that nature for the, for the homeless. And little by little, understanding them and what they were going through and being an ear for them, as you mentioned earlier as well, I'm able to learn from these individuals from that point, even prior to that, till now. So where they're literally my family members, but besides the body and so forth that that became family, other than than bloodline family and, and stuff, a lot of them could teach us where to find food, how they get clothes, mm. different things that they deal with on a daily basis, like basically that things that we like, like things right things we take for granted. Exactly, just mm. exactly what you mentioned that they cherish what they get from individuals or, or just what they're being blessed with in general. But they, they know literally like I, I got off the train and the couple I'm cool with around my way, <laughs> you always showing love. I show love to them. He asked if I had food on me and whatnot. Cause they know this, this is what I do. And, and it's just a blessing to really be like a, a spiritual therapist. I say, mm. That where we don't need these individuals, psychiatrists and, and, and whatnot, to where we got Yeshaya and the scriptures that feed us what we need and, and to relieve our souls from being broken and, and going through so much chaos and pain and different formats and, and whatnot as everybody's trials and tribulations and what everybody been through as as even down to the social media to where people mask all of these things and put up fronts. Right. So and it's a scary, it's a scary situation concerning that. And that's what it is, because you know, all of that's a facade. It's just there to deter you mm-hmm. to, to deter you from the real mission at hand, which is your soul. Because that that's that's what these principalities, demons, and Satan that's what they want. They want you to to deceive yourself to the point where now you end up in that place where that brother was talking about. And, and and it's it's, it's it's sad because and like I said like I was saying in the beginning because it's sad because normally people wouldn't choose to end up there and if 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 a lot of people realized and knew what was on the other side a lot I believe a lot of people by default would choose to do the right thing but this this world is 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 definitely a setup right and 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 it, and it starts from it starts from when you're young right. You don't have a certain pair of sneaker on. You don't have a certain pair of jeans or a shirt, a t-shirt on. It, psychologically, it makes you feel like you're less than. Now you, when you, now you, you, your aim is to grow and to get these and, and to get money to be able to provide yourself to get these things that has no value because we put the value on it. Like we put the value of putting another man's name on on, on our chest. Like, I'm somebody because my shirt says Armani Exchange. That's someone. That's that. That's a man's name. So you you you're somebody because you have another man's name on your on your back. We don't even look at it to that extent. But go ahead. No, yeah, yeah, you're 100 percent right. And also concerning that working with, with brother Jonathan on Staten Island and, and um in one of the clothing stores. Mm-hmm. It's, it's crazy. Like about 10, 15 minutes into the shift, we saw migrants coming out of two different stores and they were dropping a whole bunch of clothes and trying to get it into bags and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's getting real out there as well yeah. to, to add that perspective. 
Yeah, that, yeah, that that, that migrant situation is is is, an, is another uh, is another th- situation within itself. But go ahead. Indeed, and con, I just I ain't I ain't mean to bring it up concerning them, but obviously it's it's coming down the wire with them. But just concerning, like you just mentioned, coveting mm-hmm. in the store, these these people are, are blind to what is taking place. Even certain coworkers and praise the Most High that that me and Jonathan were doing ministry work within the store and and even through individuals that come in. Like I told some of the brothers also uh, last year, but that there was an Edomite sister with a cut on her face. And I, she seemed like she was going to steal. Mm-hmm. But then she was there for about 20, 30 minutes. And I went to the back to the kids section because I was going to buy one of the sister's sons a, a toy. And she asked me out of nowhere, do you think these, these shoes are, are cool for kids? And I was like, no, nah, I don't really like them, but I'm trying to get something for a sister from my church and her children. So she starts asking, "What's what? Um, what church are you from? What's what's the denomination? This, that, and the third. I'm like, it's Christian based. And little by little, I'm speaking the gospel, I'm talking about it about Christ and so forth. And she starts getting convicted, and she started dropping tears. Yeah, praise the Most so High. She, yeah, so she started opening up and telling me that I was about to steal, but I'm I'm actually gonna leave everything alone. And uh, she started telling me about three or four other brothers that be out there stealing to, to watch out for them and so forth. Oh, wow. Yeah, that she wanted a flyer. Um, hopefully she comes back one of these days and, and I'll have a flyer for her. Hopefully. Yeah, and that she's going through an abusive relationship, which is why she has a, a scar on her face. And I was just telling mm-hmm. her to, to get away from that situation and also to repent pertaining to that that video in the, in the lesson. That you, this. It's not a game. This yeah. is hellfire is real. Judgment day is real. It's really not a game. And I know we fall and mess up at times. And literally just walking to work today, my heart was heavy because I'm just truly grateful. And I pray all our <clears throat> Salaki, that all our brothers and sisters really acknowledge the gift that we have, this repentance every day is, is truly a blessing to God. get this thing together. And, and I, I'll leave off with this as the scripture mentions and that how I try to pertain every day with as in, I don't know the, the exact chapter and verse, but I believe Paul said one man esteemeth every day alike and another man esteemeth every day the same. Mm-hmm. So I say this, regardless how we feel on our wake up, if we're tired, if we're going through it, family issues, whatever the case may be, I, I just, Say to all the brothers and sisters to do your best to make other individuals' day a blessing as well. Because that one simple conversation, that one little compliment, that one little joy of, of just being a light, a true light of love and care, and of course, our brothers and sisters in the body as well, it, it brings something to individuals that it's a blessing to do that, especially at work where some people will say, nobody said how are you or, or spoke to me in general? Like you were the first person to say that. Mm. And I know how hard it is for your job with all, all the chaos and everything that, that comes to pass. Definitely. Even definitely. then, like, mm-hmm. like the scriptures say, put hot coals of love on people's heads, basically. So even when you feel that, that type of fleshly negativity and whatnot, do our, to, to do our best to make every day joyful to not only ourselves and the most up, but also to other individuals that might be going through something. That's how much power that we have through him and Yeshaya at the end of the day as well. Con, con. Well, Adam, I'm going I'm to I'm put you back in the queue. I got some other calls I'm going to take, but definitely appreciate you calling in, my brother. Um, you know, continue doing the work, man. You know, bless you. All praise be to the most high, man. I got Shay coming in right now. And, you know, and, and what he was saying is, is, is very true. We definitely got to be a light more often and, and, and try to uh, uh, show more love, you know, I, I, and I receive that, man. Definitely, definitely receive that because you, you never know. Somebody, somebody could, could just be wanting to hear something nice. They probably, they probably at the end of the, at the end of the line, and they probably think about doing something crazy to themselves and then you come out of nowhere with, you, with, with your love and your kindness and that kind of reels them back. Like how that example he gave, Sister was 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 thinking about stealing. I mean, he dropped Christ on him like, "Yo, 
I can't still, I can't be doing this. You never know. You change somebody's life. But Shay, Shalom, what's going on? Shalom, family. How are you guys? How are you doing? I'm all right. How you, how you doing, sis? <laughs> I'm doing good. Right, um, right. Brother, if you uh, don't mind um, following up with Brother Adam said, I'd like to share a quick uh, about one minute little story um, that ties in with the whole um, video interview that you sent, mm-hmm. that you just put, showed us. Got, yeah, the floor is yours. Okay, Mm -hmm. Um, so one of our sisters, I'm in the body of Mobile. We aren't official yet, but you heard, Elder, we're coming soon. We're under Atlanta. (laughs) Um, But one of our sisters actually just passed away. Um, She had cancer. And we, me and her actually got baptized last year, Mm. uh, February 19th. Um, And it was a beautiful experience. Did, did, Did she just find out or she already knew? Um, I think that she's known for a little bit, but I'm not for sure, Deacon, on how long she's had it. Mm. That part I don't know. But um, she but she just passed away from that. And when I tell you the more highlight of the story is not for it to be a somber thing, but it's to tell you how hard that sister has been going. And she blew a trumpet for us, so I'm just passing it on to the rest of the body because it hit all of us, and it really is making us walk this walk extra righteously. Mm -hmm. But she went very, very hard, um, traveling back and forth from different cities, states, getting the best medical treatment, just draining of her body. And I tell you that sister showed up to Shabbat, not for Mm -hmm. any of us, but she showed up for the most high. And when I tell you she went away, she transitioned in the most peaceful um, way possible with her husband, with her kids around her, with the elders from the church around her, praying over her, asking, you know, going through the steps of how she forgiven, who she needs to forgive and all those things. She transitioned beautifully. And when I tell you that I spoke to the elders and he is blowing a trumpet to us of how we are to operate and her husband Mm. to, you know, his daily thing was to send us scriptures every single day. And for him, the next day afterwards, to send us the scriptures on dealing with death when he's going through something is such a beautiful thing for us to see his faith and his courage. And it reminds me of the scriptures of, you know, what shall separate us. Right. Mm. In Romans, yeah. Yes. So um, to transition to um, Elder Loya and, you know, the um, the elders talk, talking to us about purpose, um, it finally, you know, zoomed in for me, like what our purpose is. Our purpose is, you know, we are characters in this movie to bring, you know, the lost sheep back. And there's sometimes, you know, like the brother Adam said, you know, we are to be joy. There's sometimes where I'll go into a store and I don't want to be that bright light today. I just want to be dim. You know, I just want to keep to myself, get in, get my tacos and get out. Right. And um, I learned that that's still a form of being disobedience when the Holy Spirit is weighing on you to, to be that light, to say hello, mm-hmm. to say good morning, to do all the things that we're supposed to do. So there was, um, and I'm going into, you know, what I'm doing to show that I'm leaving the world behind. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a Edomite lady as well today that came in. She kind of was a little stubborn, didn't really, you know, we'd make conversation. It was kind of very dry. And um, I was talking to my coworker because he asked, he said he wanted to cook something and w- would I eat it? And I said, well, you know, I don't eat pork, so blah, blah, blah. So that, that whole thing sparked her interest. And she was like, why don't you eat pork? And she's like, are you Jewish? And I said, no, ma'am. I said, you know, because in the book of Leviticus, it says, you know, 11, we're not supposed to. And we went whole conversation from that. And when I tell you, she talked nonstop. And she was talking about how, you know, she used to go on that um, Leviticus diet and that, you know, she, she, I just inspired her to go back on it and that it really is bad for your body, all the foods and blah, 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 this, that, and the third. So we really do have to be that light. Mm. And my one thing that I'm doing to leave the world behind is my, me and my husband talked about it, like that there may be a possibility we won't have kids and that's okay. Um, we have plenty of other people's kids that we can help out, but, um, that's a good way to look at it. You know, is to continue to keep shining, um, continue to keep prepping, to keep stocking, to just stay tunnel vision and to stay focused. 
And the only thing that I have joy in doing is spreading this gospel. That's it. All praises be to the most high. All praises. <laughs> well, well, you keep you you keep doing what you're doing, and you know if it be if it be the most high will, you know you you guys will have your own children to tend to, you know. If yes, it's, sir. If it's his will, but continue doing what you're doing with 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 them. I mean, without them, or if you do have them, that's that's yes, a good sir. that's a good mindset because some people will get discouraged because they they don't have the children that they they thought that they were going to have. Um, and you know, they start to blame the most high, but you know, I'm happy that you guys are in good spirits and you guys are, are, are considering, you know, helping those in the, in the body who have children. That's a great way to look at it. Praise the most yes. high for that. All right. My yes. sister, I thank you for the call. I'm gonna put you back in the queue. You have a good night. Thank you, brother. Shalom. All right. Shalom, shalom. All, right all right. So we're going to move right along. I got Christopher, then I got Sam, and that is it. Shalom. Shalom, can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you loud and clear, my brother. So, so tell me, what, what, what are the, some of the things that, that, that you're doing to help you leave this world behind, physically and spiritually? Well, they can, um, I can say this. Um... Me personally, um, I was, you know, I was celebrating, like I say, um, carnival because over here where I live, they celebrate carnival. And at that time, I was celebrating carnival, but now, of years, I don't celebrate it no more. How can I say this? Um, this year, they celebrate carnival, and thank God I was not there because there was a lot of fighting, there was um, stabbing each other, and I, so most I thank you, I was not there. And 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 I was on day of um the feast of um Purim. Mm, look at that on, on on a day where they should be giving and and loving each other and, and and celebrating the fact that the Most High took us, saved us from the hands of our enemies. They over there killing yes. killing each other. Yeah, sir. And <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Um, uh, the yesterday, I thought I cannot go to Purim. Because I had to go, you know, go to work, and I pray to Mosai, Mosai, forgive me. I cannot celebrate your your the, your feast of praying. But then, you know, I say I don't. I was I'm working, but you know, I say to myself, you know what? Let me see, try it. At least to do, you know to con um have a congregation. You know, so so can listen listen to the word, you know, mm-hmm. and. I did not par- participate, you know, in the, you know, in the, to, to enjoy the, um, the, um, print, but at least I was happy. I was there in the congregation of foreign. Mm-hmm. Well, praise the most high because, you know, um, you know, a lot, a lot of us got stuff that we have to take care of and the most high yes. knows that the most high understands that, you know, we can't, there's certain, there's certain feasts that we would like to keep, but we can't keep it perfectly because we're not in our land. But the the most important thing is that you you are acknowledging the feast and you and you have the desire to want to keep it. So I do believe the Most High will make a way for you, you know, in the future and, to be able to to, to, yes. to keep these feasts perfectly. And and Deacon, but so so that's why I would say the the first thing was to leave the world behind is is not in the you know the pagan parties, especially in the carnival that was mm-hmm. horrible, mm-hmm. <laughs> and. Concerning about the you know the brother uh, of the spirits going to hell, I I I remember my mother. She told me um I don't know uh, but uh she told me uh I think it was three three in the morning it was three in the morning. I you know I I can't, I can't sleep nothing not not even mother and then I go to my mother. My mom, she, my mom, she, um, my mom, how can I say? She, she was not scared, but I, um, at the same time, like nervous. She tell me, "Son, I saw him," mm. and I say, "You saw, you saw who?" I say, I, "She keep telling me, I saw him, I saw him," and I ask her again, "Who, who do you saw?" She tell me, "A fallen angel." Okay. And that was in a, that was in a dream. I, I was a huh? What, what, what I say? What are you talking about? Because she she told me she, you know the, the the horrible place, and she told me she saw you know, one of one of them. Uh, she told me uh, 
the the fallen angel was beautiful, but at the same time, he he, he have the presence of evil. How can I say this? Of pure pure darkness. Mm-hmm. And, and and I said, mom, thank thank God, you you soul did not go there and all that. But but she was sweating. She was nervous. Is she is she part so, of the church now? Um. Yes, but um, short, sometimes they go. Um, they obligate her to go to work on the Sabbath. Okay, okay. Well, as long as long as she she's doing the right thing and and she's baptized for the remission of her sins and she's trying to follow the Most High in spirit and truth, you know, she should be protected, right? And, and Most High have mercy yeah. on her. But um, uh, my, my brother, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to put you in the queue. I have one more call. You have to get, but you you, you have, you have oh, one because last thing. I want to tell you one more thing, um, Deacon. Yeah, go ahead, real quick. Um, I, I don't know if you can see in the camera. Uh, I received uh, Jafar, and you received uh, and what? It, 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 uh, Jafar, you, you know the horns from the the feast of um trumpets. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about a shofar? Yes, uh, I received it as a gift. So uh, I thank the Most High for to allow me to receive it. Mm-hmm. So that's that's um. Oh, oh, oh you got you, oh you got that as a gift from Purim. Uh no, I um I did not receive on Purim, but uh, it it was la- last week, but I still acknowledge you know, you know the most high to thank you to to allow me to receive this gift. Oh, praise the most high, all, all praises. I clap it off for that. All praises, praise the most high. All right, my brother. I'm gonna put you back in the queue. It's always great talking to you, my brother. Um definitely always great you know, hearing from my from my brothers in the, on the island. All praises. Um, let me get the last caller in. Where did it go? <clears throat> One second. I know I had I had one person left. I had Sam left. If you could unmute yourself, Sam, that'd be great. Because I don't see where the thing went. Shalom, shalom, D. Can you hear me? Shalom, okay, I hear you. How are you? How you, how you, how you doing? How you doing? What's going on? Praise the most, sir. All praise the most, sir. All praise the most, So tell me, man, real quick. How how are you preparing yourself to leave this world? How, how, or can you leave this world behind? That's the question. Both physically uh, and spiritually. Are you ready for that? That that part, D, is, is not an issue for me because that that's already been done before. You know, um, as you know, I'm African. Um, I'm from Sierra Leone, and we went through a brutal war um, back in the '90s, from the early '90s. As a matter of fact, that's what got me to this country. Mm. You know, that's not an issue. But now, being that I understand and know mu- much, and seen a lot of things that I've went down, my only concern is: would I be faithful? Uh, would I trust in the Most High and the leadership, um, and more so? Uh, with my righteousness stay intact because I don't think people understand war. Mm-hmm. I praise the Most High. I'm grateful that we didn't went through the brunt of it mm-hmm. because when it all went down, you know, we was able to clear out, go to a neighboring um, country and seek uh, asylum over there. So I did not, uh, as my, my my brothers and sisters went through, like bullets flying over the head. But we saw much destruction and all that type of stuff, and having to go through that whole situation where you are uncertain because I think this is the thing that people don't need. Yeah. Yeah. It's good with all that preparing and all that type of stuff. But as Edra said, when we get taken out of houses, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and that's when he's going to know who the true people are. Right. So, so wait, wait on that point. Yeah. Be taking out your houses. What are you doing? Like, so now let's talk, let's focus on that. What are you, what are you doing to prepare yourself? Like, let's say stuff like that happens. Give us some examples well, of like what are you doing as far as you know preparing yourself to leave this world behind. Well, according me, to um, according to the Second Edra sixteen chapter sixteen. Right. Um. For me, on that level, because I've acqu- I've acquired a lot of skills, so I know how to live off the land. Mm. You know, as mm. far as um, yeah, that that part. <laughs> um, grow, growing up in Africa, that was already part of our daily thing. Right. You know. Having a, having a fish, having to do this, having to do mm. that, set traps, um, different herbs you could use and all that type of stuff. Uh, even though yeah, it, it, we're in a different part that most of these things are not here, 
but uh, to understand that and wherever we are to know, uh, be handy with a couple of tools, you know what I'm saying? Uh, even dig a well, them type of things. So because uh, those times going to come. Yeah, you could prepare right now, but w- once that, that time comes when you have to leave the house, when you can't bring all these foods that you have with you, mm-hmm. what you going to do at that at that point right. is, is the main is the main thing. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, that time is going to come and it's fast approaching because people don't realize like with us, when that thing happened, situation happened, it was just one morning we woke up and guns firing. Next thing you know, three, four hours or whatever it was, the the country was overthrown. The government was overthrown, mm. and rebels are coming, and they are not playing, and they are destroying people and houses and burning things down and all that type of stuff. So, you know, and and that's just uh, part of that situation. Then, and Bible tells us this evil that's coming now is <laughs> I don't even know how many times you multiply the type of evil that's going to be at these times because this is the final this is when evil itself will be staring people right in the face and they're seeing right. that and i believe and i'm saying that's just my belief i think for some people um i believe the most High is taking them out the way because they might not be able to survive the type of evil um that's coming um um in these in this in these last times and then this 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 situation that we are facing especially when we we in babylon so for me um just preparing my mind and uh, to be able to stand up, um, to be able to to protect, to be able to defend, to be able to uh, go go do the little things that need to be done, whether it's hunting or whether it's uh, um, um, chopping down trees or climbing a tree or oh, so you so, so you ready you ready you more well, than ready. I mean these things <laughs> these things I, I I put that's what I think about like I say but that's why I say I, I need and my my biggest concern is would I be faithful would I be you know what I'm saying and those type of ends because you could say you you could say all you want Peter, Peter said oh and I'm not gonna leave um Christ I'm not gonna leave when when the thing went down boom he he went to so I'm 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 asking the most I not to prepare me for these times that my mind will not waver, I will not fall to the wayside or, you know what I'm saying, if situation, because people don't realize the type of evil that we're going to face. Yeah. Somebody, we, you know what I'm saying, say we're in a group and we're going through and the little we got, some group of people try to come take it. Would I stand up or would I fall? Mm. These type of things is what I, 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 I you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> those times is going to come, you know, but, Again, you know what I'm saying? People don't don't realize that these things are real. I've yeah. witnessed it. I've seen it. Mm. You know, and 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 being that it's it's going to happen again, especially, you know what I'm saying, us going into the wilderness again, would we be in a position to 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 uh listen to leadership, listen to instruction because in war, that's the number one thing. You don't follow instructions, people would die. Yeah. Gone. People would die. So, you know what I'm saying? And those are the things that I'm I'm focusing on at this point all praises all praise as well you know and, and I'm, I'm happy that you know i had you brothers and sisters call in so that way if someone wasn't thinking in that uh type of mind or didn't have that type of mind set as of right now there maybe could be starting to formulate that type of processing in their mind right now because we all need we all need to start thinking like that because like i said everything could be operating right now and 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 <laughs> And, and we could go here and move here and do this. What happens if, if that just all stops? How can we apply what we're learning through through the scriptures in Christ and bring it real real time and start living it real time, right? But definitely appreciate you calling in. You're the last caller of the night, my brother. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Deke, for 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 taking my call and shalom, fam. Uh-huh. All praises, all praise. Thank you for your, thank you, and thank you all for your patience too. Thank you for your patience as well too. You know, I know I had y'all in the queue, but you know, praise the Most High for your patience and um, allowing me to go through the the, the broadcast. Uh, but you know, y- y'all all have you have a good night. Uh, but they, once again, the water for the patience. <laughs> all praises, all praise be to the Most High. But yeah, brothers and sisters, um, I, I really hope that this broadcast really put some things in perspective for you all, as far as how we should be viewing it one on a physical because you know we could easily get rid of the physical and, and be like I, I could walk away from this house i could walk away from a million dollars i hope y'all can i could walk away from this i could walk away from that but what about walking away from things that will hinder your soul your spirit from eternal damnation what about those things 
What what about the things that we're still dealing with issues, backbiting, right? Um, bearing false witness, uh, 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 fornication, adultery, all of these things that are stop us from entering into paradise. Are we ready to leave these things behind as well too? So we got to look at both aspects of it and, and you got, y'all got to be real with yourself and really ask yourself like, yo, am I, am I really being a, a true example of Christ to the world? And that's what we all have to ask ourselves after this broadcast. Are we doing enough to represent Christ? That is the question. But brothers and sisters, uh, you know, I, I believe this, that's my time for tonight. <laughs> right? And we want to give, once again, I want to give all praises to the Most High, Ahaya, in the name of his son, Yeshua, our Lord, our Savior, and our King, for allowing us this opportunity to have this conversation. And I do hope and I do pray that this conversation is eye-opening for everybody. But like I'd say every, every week, you know, like all good things, this show must also come to an end. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're now tuned into the Born of Levi experience. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for making this broadcast what it was. Thank you for those who called in and shared your experiences. And, you know, I want to start doing that more often. Just start putting like and I, I've been saying I was going to do that. and I haven't done that until tonight. Right. Forgive me. But I'm going to start putting out the link way earlier so we could make this broadcast a conversation because you guys bring a lot of great points. And it's in some areas you guys touch on that I I miss. So uh, praise the most high for you all. Um, praise the most high for for your existence and and your walk and your experiences. And I pray that he keeps you all until we see that day. Right. That, that That's the mission. Right. This race is not to the swift. It's a day at a time, brothers and sisters. Right. And let tomorrow let let the evils of tomorrow worry about itself. We'll we'll see it when we get there and we'll handle it then. Right. But until then, brothers and sisters, Shalom, peace and blessings. Also, happy Feast of Purim for those of you guys who I haven't spoken to. So I just want to say that formally. Right. Uh, which for Purim was it actually ended last night sundown but i'm just gonna say it formally and to those of you who i'll see at the shabbat i'll see you guys at the shabbat hopefully you guys are you know are at your local congregation you guys are linking in with your local congregation and making sure you guys are staying up to date with your leadership that's very important right um we see the days approaching we see what's happening right don't get caught by the wayside so with that being said Peace and blessings, family. Shalom. Stay prayed up. Sin not. And if it be the Most High's will, we will see Zion. Right? Shalom. <laughs>